contributing uh, cause of, the, of, of this type of accident, again, it doesn't have to be a Fukushima, it can happen here, is overcrowded fuel pools. When these plants were designed, the plan was that the fuel would stay there for five years and then be shipped to a reprocessing plant. Um, and then uh, I was in the business of building, uh, when I was a senior VP in the industry, one of the things my division did was build nuclear fuel racks. And, and we built nuclear fuel racks sometimes three times for the same client because they would say, well, five, we'll, get, we'll double it, we'll go to 10. Five years later, they'd be back knocking on the door saying we need more. Um, and, and so what has happened is that the uh, fuel racks in the country are chocker block full. Um, the, the reactors like Pilgrim have been very high, there's extra issues there, but, but the, the real issue is when you have all that fuel in one place. There's more cesium in the, um, in the fuel pool at Pilgrim than has be, been released by all the atomic bombs, Chernobyl and Fukushima combined. So if a fuel pool has a fire, the, the potential is astronomical for you know, incredible damage. Uh, this is a picture of uh, the Unit 4 fuel pool, um, and it was taken in August, uh, I'm sorry, in April after the explosion, but before uh, most of the uh, water was added back in. And it shows the, um, uh, the top of the fuel racks are the little tiny boxes, uh, and they are exposed. So they lost enough water to expose the top of the nuclear fuel. And I'll point it out here. There's a, there's a bunch of little boxes in here. And there's a bunch of little boxes in here. And if you're in the building of little box business, they're really obvious. But if you haven't built these little boxes, it might take a little bit of observation. Um, this, this slide's on our website if you wanted to look uh, in, in some detail. But, um, this is a high density rack. Um, it's not, and the Japanese were much better than the Americans. They kept the fuel there for five, six, seven years and then got it into dry cast storage. Um, the Americans have almost no dry cast storage, just enough to keep enough <coughs> core offload. Um, so contributing cause number two is the fact that we put too much fuel in our fuel pools and, um, and we need to get it into dry cast storage. Excellent. The, the third cause, and, and this is finally becoming uh, discussed, even if the diesels hadn't flooded, Fukushima would have failed anyway, because the diesels have their own cooling pumps called service water pumps, and they're right on the water. Well, the tsunami came and inundated the service water pumps, and even after it left, it's hard to get a motor, you know, drop your hair dryer in the kitchen sink and then pull it out and try to turn it on and it's not going to work very well. Um, the service water pumps failed at Fukushima as well. So um, you know, when, when different American reactors will tell you, well, our, our diesels are way up high, it wouldn't happen here. The fact of the matter is that the pump has to be down at the water because that's where the water is. And you can see on this picture, <coughs> there's a bunch of rubble right here. That's the service water pumps. They were gone. So uh, even if the diesels had survived, even if the diesels had been up higher, you wouldn't have had the water to cool the diesels and we would be in the same situation. And, and again, that's, um, so when people talk about, well, our diesels are different than their diesels, your service water system is not. It's gotta be on the water. So for instance, in, um, um, in um, Florida, at the Turkey Point plant that Dave talked about, um, Hurricane Andrew narrowly missed, and they push up a, um, a huge wave of water in front. Um, it doesn't take a hurricane much worse than Hurricane Andrew to inundate the service water pumps and, and cause a Fukushima-like accident here. Okay. And last but not least, I think what, what I learned, the lesson I learned is no matter how smart you are, Mother Nature's smarter. Um, this picture is, is taken last week at a nuclear plant in Nebraska. There's two nuclear plants, I don't know if you've been following this, but if you're in Nebraska, you're following it, you better believe it. Um, there's, um, there's been a lot of runoff, um, there's been an enormous amount of snow in the Rockies, and um, uh, several of the rivers that, uh, that run down out of the Rockies, and this is the Missouri, are, are um, at flood stage. 
Actually, they're way over flood stage. Um, the, the Missouri is about ready to breach the, the levees at this nuclear plant. Now, um, that's what we call a design basis accident. That, that's what you build for. And you shouldn't expect to have a design basis accident. Everybody thinks, well, we put some extra heft into this. This is right at the top of the levees now. Yet it happened in 1993 as well. So when you have two design bases accidents in 20 years, the lesson is, you know, maybe we really need to build these levees a little higher. That would be a good idea. But it doesn't happen. Now, um, the other piece of this is that what, what Fukushima told us is that you know, we anticipated a tsunami, but we didn't anticipate the mother of all tsunamis. The reason the, the, the um, Missouri is flooded right now is because there's six dams upstream that are full to capacity, and if they get any fuller, they're going to break. So all of the pipes are discharging all of the water they can downstream to prevent the dams from breaking. Well, I live in a what-if world. What if one of those dams break? The, the applicant, or the, the guy who owns this plant, doesn't have to design for that. So we are one dam breakage away from our own Fukushima in Nebraska right now. Now, here, you guys had the Cape Ann earthquake. I don't know if you remember that back in 1690 or something like that. It leveled Boston. and and. Don't think that the Cape Ann earthquake is the worst that you can expect. I mean, Mother Nature's teaching us here that, that she can throw stuff at us. It's a lot more difficult than we've anticipated. Yet the New England plants are designed as their design basis earthquake is Cape Ann. Um, and the records back then were not too, too great. So we're, we're, um, we're going on a, a very slim uh, history. On the west coast, you've got uh, Diablo Canyon. Three miles offshore is a fault that they discovered after they built the plant. But it's grandfathered in because they discovered it after they built the plant. And, and down the coast is uh, San Onofre, and the, the tsunami wall there is 9 meters or about 28 feet. Um, I think you know, we need to reevaluate. Mother Nature can do a lot more to us than we want to believe can happen. Okay, David, you're